Hey there guys, Paul here from TheEngineeringMindset.com. In this video, we are going to be looking at a typical modern heating system in a commercial building. Now there are many variations of how this can be configured, uh, and we'll, I'll make some videos to show you a few of these variations. But this version is fairly typical of uh, the newer construction commercial buildings. Now as you can see, we've got uh, two large boilers over here and they are piped in parallel and what that means is uh, that both boilers can operate at the same time or individually so one could be isolated um, and cut off red and opened up for maintenance while the other boiler here continues to run and provide uh, heating to the building and this is the most common type of uh, configuration for modern heating systems the other version would be series, um, and for this type of building, that's not really practical. Now, I'll just show you an example of what some of these large um, commercial boilers might look like. So here's one uh, I've done some work on previously, and it's fairly typical to the one I've shown in the uh, 3D model. So we've got the big gas burner at the front here, and then the main uh, boiler unit over here. Uh, this is a very old boiler, actually. Um, you're fairly unlikely to come across these in, in obviously newer builds. Newer heating systems may have uh, some boilers like this where there's much smaller ones and they can change the demand of the building. But they may look something a bit like this. I mean, Hovel are a, uh, a fairly well-known brand for boilers in commercial buildings. And these boilers are probably around 15 years old as well. So these boilers are the heat source for the heating system. And that heat is then uh, pushed into the hot water of the uh, heating system and one of the terms you're, you'll come across in these sorts of systems is um, the terms primary and secondary circuits so and as you can see here we've got the primary pump set so um, these two pumps here which in the real world might look something a bit like this in a slightly larger system they may look a bit like this as well but these primary pumps they will push the water uh, around the system so they'll push this uh, around the primary side so that hot water leaves the boiler enters uh, into this pipework here is sucked by the pump and then pushed out into this the low loss header which we'll have a look at shortly and that water can then either uh, exit through these pumps here up into the risers or some of it and some of it will um, continue through into the other side of the header so this is just one continuous pipe uh, and that will then leave that water and return back to the boiler at a lower temperature to pick up more heat and continue that cycle again. I'll just show you an example of a low loss header. So we've got the boiler feed water coming into here. And this is the, uh, the header here, the common header. And so that hot water is entering into here and that can either leave through this pipe or through this pipe uh, or it can continue down and back around into the boilers to pick up more heat. Now that water that leaves through these pipes can return uh, back through these ones and then that water will then mix with the flow. So the water that's coming through from the boiler, some of it will uh, be sent down to return around and that will mix with this return water here. And that is known as the low loss header or the common header. And coming off of the header from the, the hot side, uh, is these which are, are risers and these go off uh, and these make up the, the secondary circuits. So in this example we've got four secondary circuits, one, two, three and four. Um, some of them have got the, this dual pump uh, and this one has got a single pump. Uh, it may not need a pump if it's if it's close enough and uh, the primary pumps can actually are actually powerful enough uh, but in most cases you, you will have a, a pump on this in this um, configuration. So I'll just show you uh, a secondary pump there. So we've got these Grun Grunfoss pumps. Um, so these will work to move that water up to wherever it's needed. Uh, we'll have a look at that in a second as well. And these will usually work in duty and standby. Same as the primary pumps, they'll also work in duty and standby. And that just means that uh, one of the pumps is on duty. So that's the working pump and the second pump 
is waiting uh, for its turn to work. Um, usually they won't both run at the same time. It is possible that they can. In some configurations that is uh, needed. But then the pumps will cycle. Uh, so for one week it might be pump one. And then for the next week it might be pump two, which is the duty pump. And the other pump won't run during that time unless the duty pump uh, create, uh, run, uh, receives a fault and it can no longer operate and in that case then the standby pump will then operate and take over so you get security built into the system um, in these configurations the same with the boilers th this can work exactly the same so both can run or individually or, or neither so these secondary circuits they will uh, take the water from this low loss header and push that up to where it's needed and you can see in this first loop it's going off and feeding uh, some radiators off on the first floor or the ground floor even and that uh, water is then returning down for this one to the uh, the other side of the low loss header and then the second secondary circuit you can see that riser there rising up the the height of the building and that is supplying uh, the hot water to all of the fan coil units so up here we've got fan coil units and uh, the return is also coming back into a riser and that returns back back to that common low loss header so you can see that there so here we've got the riser coming up and we've got the connection coming off and feeding into that fan coil unit the fcu that then gives up its heat and then that water then returns cooler back to the return riser where it makes its way uh, along here through the floor and then back into the low loss header the third secondary circuit you can see that feeding up and going off and feeding into the AHUs connected over here that water then obviously once it's cooler returns back to the header uh, and makes its way back to the low loss header to make its way back to the boiler and pick up more heat I'll just show you an example here of the heating coil on an AHU. So here we've got the flow, the water coming in uh, from that secondary system, entering into this co heating coil where it gives up its heat to the air. And that heated air then goes off and is provided off into the office space. And meanwhile, that uh, heating water returns at a cooler temperature and heads back to the boiler. And the final circuit on the uh, the se final secondary circuit is this one here so this is going off and feeding into a calorifier now the calorifier is where the domestic hot water is produced so this is the the hot water that comes out of the taps and there's a lot of chemicals that uh, go into this uh, primary heating system or the LTHW system low temperature hot water system and you don't really want to drink that so what happens is the hot water is fed from here into the calorifier and it passes into a heat exchanger where it just transfers its heat into some fresh water which is held inside the tank that fresh water is then heated up and that is supplied to the to the kitchens and to the, the sinks etc um, meanwhile that uh, cooler uh, water is returned back to the low loss header where it mixes in with this and heads back to the boiler and I'll just show you an example there so this is a free calorifier uh, configuration and you can see here we've got the heat exchanger just on the side there so that hot water is coming in exchanging its heat with the uh, the clean water on the other side and that then makes its way uh, back to the boiler meanwhile the fresh drinkable water uh, is taken off and sent off around to the building now you can also notice here we've got the expansion vessel and the pressurization unit. Now the pressure in the system is going to change. Um, for example, if this pump set here, if that was off and it turns on, then this primary pump set here is going to see a pressure decrease because this has opened up and so uh, there's, there's flow there, right? So if these pumps then stopped working and they, they isolated this, then these pumps will see a pressure increase uh, because there is less um, room for that, that water it's pushing to go and so the friction uh, inside is going to increase and the, the pressure will build up. The same as if uh, when, when this, the water in this loop 
uh, increases temperature or decreases in temperature, then it's going to change in density, uh, and that's also going to affect the temp, the pressure as well. So this expansion vessel and the pressurization unit uh, is plugged into that, usually into somewhere around the low loss header. Uh, it, it, there's a couple of places it could be, but it's usually located here. And that's just looking at the pressure there, and uh, it's going to react to that. So um, if it gets too high, then obviously uh, the expansion vessel will take some of that. And when it gets too low, then the pressurization unit will uh, force that back into the system to equalize it. And the pressurization unit will uh, probably look something like this, where you've got the expansion tanks, uh, the vessels over here, and then the main pressurization unit just there as well. Now tucked away over here you can see we've got the dosing pot um, and that is usually located somewhere uh, plugged across the low loss header. You can see an example there so we've got the, the main dosing pot and then we've got the two connections from the, uh, the header just there. And the, the dosing pot this just allows uh, chemical inhibitors to be poured into the, into the system uh, and to be pumped around and that just keeps it clean and bacteria free um, but we'll we'll look more into that in another video now the the pipes in this diagram have been color coded so you can see uh, the red here that's indicating that the uh, it's a high temperature so that's obviously leaving the boiler so that's leaving it around 80 degrees celsius about 176 degrees fahrenheit and the yellow pipe here is indicating that it's a lower temperature because that's the return that's it's gone around the building and lost its heat and it's coming back and that's going to return at about 70 degrees celsius or 158 degrees fahrenheit and i'll just show you the schematic representation of this so down here we've got the pressurization unit uh, and the expansion vessels then we've got two boilers located just here um, and we've got the water coming through these and being pulled by the pump set there and that's pushing that water into this low loss uh, common header and uh, forming the primary circuit so that water then feeds around in a continuous loop there you've also then got these secondary loops so we've got the pump set here and that's taken off you can see the multiple valve configurations there as well and uh, that, that's another secondary circuit coming off and then both of them are returning through this here down into the common header so that flow water will mix with this cooler uh, return water and make its way back around to the boilers and over here we've got the dosing loop as well. Okay that's it for this video thank you very much for watching I hope this has helped I uh, hope you learned some of the systems if it has then please like and subscribe to us and share the video with anyone that you think might help. Alright thanks for watching.